I guess my laziness and procrastination is going to pay off today. Behind me is my daily driver Pathfinder that's got over 300,000 miles on it and it's got a bad case of the rear end wheels. The worst part of it is is I've had the parts to fix this for months now and I just kept putting it off. But now that we're supposed to be social distancing and not running all over town, I guess now's a good time to do it, right? Today, I plan on going over different suspension designs, what control arms do, how to diagnose bad bushings, and then I'm going to put some new control arms under this turd right here. All right, this is a four link design is what some people call it or four link plus pan hard bar or track bar. You can use those interchangeably. This is your track bar. This is your lower control arm and your upper control arms are hidden. That's the bracket for it. Let's see if I can get this shot. There it is. This is your upper control arm. Here we are over here at the whiteboard. I'm gonna show you how these four links work with my four link doodles. All right, so these are poor drawings, but as, uh, maybe you can figure out that is the rear end and these represent the tires. And these guys right here are your lower links. The lower links keep the rear end from moving back and forth under the body of the truck. This guy right here represents your pan hard bar, but I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. So here's your side view, and this will explain how your uh, upper links work. Your upper links, which would be this guy right here, keep the pinion from moving up and down and the axle twisting like this. And here would be your rear view. So if you were looking at the back of the truck, looking at it that way, this pan hard bar keeps the axle from moving back and forth as that arrow denotes underneath the truck. If any of these bushings go out, it'll cause a bunch of problems and make it drive weird and even can cause death sways and death wobbles. One more thing is I wanted to include is, I don't know if any factory vehicles have this design, but uh, this is something very common when guys build off-road trucks on Jeeps and stuff. And this one, uh, is a triangulated four link whereas the uppers are triangulated like this that's why they call it that duh but when you do that if there's enough angle on your uppers then you don't need a track bar or a pan hard like that guy right there because the angle of them will hold the vehicle straight or to hold the axle straight under the vehicle what is that oh great I got an oil leak Hey, that looks like it's a rear main seal. Oh, fun times in the driveway. I think crisis averted though, because it appears that it poured out when I jacked the back of the truck up and that's common. 
so it's not really leaking that bad it just when i changed the angle of the truck it pulled out the bell housing still something i need to fix eventually but i'm gonna feel like pulling a transmission out today all right let's check these bushes out oh yeah look at them rips that's where a lot of it's coming from i don't know if you can tell see how bad that bushing looks this rear suspension design is not just for Nissan Pathfinders. There's a lot of vehicles riding up down the road to have this. I mean, uh, a lot of your newer Dodge pickups, uh, Forerunners, Jeeps have four links in the front, a lot of them like your Wranglers. And if it's got symptoms like this, then you need to start looking at them bushings. Now compare what you saw on that truck. This is what the bushings look like when they're new. And I'm going to tell you, if you're doing stuff in the driveway, there's going to be a listing for uh, bushings by themselves, but trying to reuse the old arms and getting the bushings out is a pain in the butt to do in the driveway. Just go ahead and spend the money and get the whole control arm if it's available, because I'm telling you, you're going to say it's worth it in headache. Something else I want to note when we're talking about these control arms, if you find a bad bushing or two bad bushings, but the rest of them look all right, go ahead and put them all on there. You know that more than likely they're the same age and then the other ones are going to cause you headache down the road. Now that I got the tire ripped off, you can get right in here after it. And the upper one too. The key to doing this job without having any issues or minimal issues is just doing one at a time. When you do one lower, do one upper, don't tighten the bolts, I'm gonna explain that later. And then do one upper and one lower. So I went ahead and I put jack stands under the frame and I got this axle to droop on down so I could get to it a lot better. First issue of the day, that bolt, the nuts off the back side, but that bolt right there is stuck in there. And I cannot, for the life of me, just take a wrench and do this. I'm gonna show you a little trick. Ooh, that had some stink on it. It's trying to round off. So, I still can't get it off. I have harassed it with everything. So my only choice is now to go see if I can get a torch and smoke it the rest of the way out of there. Cause I don't have anything here that'll handle it. Look at that. And that means I'm daily driving that turd tomorrow. All right, it's a new day. And I decided instead of trying to find a torch I'm gonna try something else to begin with. Yesterday, the Sawzall blades I had. Really, dude? Yesterday. Bruh. Yesterday, the Sawzall blades I had were just ripped the teeth right off of them. But I braved the elements and braved coronavirus and stopped by Home Depot and I got Diablo. on scrap pile. I can get some money for this. But first, let's analyze. That's what I ended up having to do. And you can see that thing is, it was rusted in there. It's almost like it's welded. Sometimes you just got to get creative. Update on Diablo. 
Diablo did the job, but Diablo is not feeling so well. I'm going to have to go get another dose Diablo because I got a bolt over here too. Spoiler alert. See if I can get this upper one ripped off. That's the way it's supposed to come off. Look at this. Cornage report. I would say my uppers were in worse shape than my lowers. That's where the wiggles is coming from. Got a new Diablo for this side. I have all the arms installed. If there's nothing you don't remember from this video, remember this. Do not tighten the bolts on these control arms with the axle hanging. And I'm about to show you why. When you don't simulate ride height and you tighten this bolt down, you gotta think, that bracket sits like my hand right here. And it, when you tighten the bolts down, it clamps down. So if it's at an angle like this, and you clamp it, and then you, see if I can do this. And then it sits level, it'll twist that bushing. And it'll end up looking like that one. In a very short period of time, it'll look like that too. I've made that mistake before. And it won't sit right. So we're gonna switch the jack stands from the frame and I'm gonna put them back under the axle that way I can simulate ride height and still have the tires off of it as long as it's close to where it rides when it's riding down the road it'll be fine now you see I got it off the frame and back on the axle now I'm gonna kind of shake this truck around a little bit I did that to try to make sure them bushes find, kind of find out where they want to be and get everything settled nice. You can shake that truck up and down and make sure it's secure and then you can start zipping them bolts down. Finally, tires are on it. Bolts are tight, sitting on the ground. Let's take it for a ride. This thing already feels better. It's less thumping and clunking, for sure. The corner's a lot better, too. I'm happy. 